So hello, I'm Paddy from Balloon Machine and Showstream TV and today I'm joined by genuine absolute favourite Laura Stevenson. Hi oh, Laura. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. So um, you're on a UK tour in support of your most recent album, The Big mm -hmm. Freeze. Um, you've got two shows left of your UK tour. How's the UK leg of this tour going? It's been great. I've been traveling with Elle Morgan, um, who's an amazing songwriter and um, Katie Gatt is playing guitar with her and it's been really great. We're in a car, We've got two mm -hmm. amps, three guitars, three people, a couple suitcases. It's mm -hmm. been really like great and we're just driving around shooting the shit. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say shit? Yeah, yeah, okay. so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's been a lot of nice conversations and really beautiful shows and mm -hmm. Beautiful sights. We went to Scotland yesterday. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been great. Mm -hmm. Having a really fun time. Yeah, and you're off to France in two days. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just got my my uh, you can check in soon thing on mm -hmm. my phone. I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go on another airplane. Well, that's what I was going to ask actually. So yeah. I've read you've got a fear of flying. Yeah. So how does that manifest? I just go. All right. <laughs> Here goes nothing. I usually try to touch the side of the plane when I'm getting mm -hmm. on it, you know? Yeah. And you see the superstitious people, you know, lined up ahead of you doing that. It's like, oh boy. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I'm one of them. And I just try to touch the plane and I just try to breathe a lot and, you know, text my loved ones and tell them <laughs> I love them one yeah. last time just in case. <laughs> and so far it's been all right, but <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Oh boy, it's gonna mm -hmm. be my last interview. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's make it a good one. <laughs> yeah, let's really tear it up. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing, um, fear of flying. My partner's got, like has fear of flying, mm -hmm. and it's something that's really irrational, but sort of something irrational about it as well. Yeah, like we were on a plane recently, and she genuinely turned to me and said, "Have they turned the engine off?" <laughs> oh, because like when you're like kind of leveling out. Yeah. When you're, yeah. I always think that. And well, I look around. She'll be and happy to know she's not alone on that. Yeah. And everybody's always just like fine and like looking at their phone. And I'm just like, my stomach is like here. And I'm like, I'm going to die. Why are nobody, why is nobody screaming? So yeah, no, I, I feel like that every yeah. time they like stop going as fast. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, well, this is a matter of time. <laughs> but yeah, no, so far it's been fine. Um, but yeah, it's terrifying. I think it's the lack of control. I mean, I know it is. It's mm -hmm. like you have zero control. And in even driving, I mean, which is not, a, it's, it's more dangerous. But like you have some semblance of like, okay, well, I would do this in this situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel like you can kind of like problem solve your way yeah. out of like, yeah. you know, making that split decision. Um, I don't know. But yeah, in an airplane, you just have to be like. Yeah whoever is flying this thing mm -hmm. and whoever made this plane and checked it and fueled it up, they all have, have to have known what they were doing. You have just have to as hope mm -hmm. and people are fallible mm -hmm. and uh, so are machines. Yeah. You kind of have <laughs> um, a reputation as maybe like an underappreciated artist or mm, as an yeah. unsung. <laughs> That's what it's like every intro paragraph. I know, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, how do you reckon with that? Known loser. That's what I like to say <laughs> in my house. Known loser, Laura Stevenson. Um, no, it's fine. It's better mm -hmm. than being oversung. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if people are like, you're overappreciated, then I'd be like, oh, there's that's shittier somehow. So, yeah, I mean, I always like the people that are kind of like fringe, like never really got their due, you know, because mm -hmm. like, I don't know, it's like a special Mm -hmm. you know secret so i guess i'm one of those mm -hmm. <laughs> and is that how you feel or is that what other people are saying about you? i mean i don't know how anything works so no. i feel like nobody knows like any of my songs so if people mm -hmm. are singing along i'm like cool cool you know mm -hmm. so like but i don't know if anybody especially now and like records are like you, you have like no way of knowing or telling mm -hmm. how anything's doing people keep asking me like how's the record doing and i'm like i don't fucking know like <laughs> People are listening to it, maybe for free places. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I bring records to shows and, like, not a lot of people are buying it because they say they already have it. But I'm like, mm -hmm. you do? Um, I don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. I don't know how any of it works. I just mm -hmm. know that I have a dog at home. Mm -hmm. What's your dog called? Lou. Lou. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's a freak. So I'm 
I just go hang out with my dog and like, and I try to write songs. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. all. That's all I really need to care about. Because if I got hung up on like all the bullshit, then yeah. I'd just be obsessing. Mm-hmm. And on Living Room New York, which is a song from your album, The Big Freeze, um, you sing a line and it goes something like, I'd fold the world to be with you. Something like mm-hmm. that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty near. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that song, Living Room New York, is about um, you missing or longing for a loved one. Mm-hmm. So I was just wondering how you cope with that when you are on tour as you are now. Well, I'm, like, notoriously bad at the phone. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm really hard to be in a relationship with when I'm on tour. Mm-hmm. And that, like, breaks my heart because I I miss my partner Mike so much Mm -hmm. you know but like I'm really bad at like calling and then like I was in Australia and I was here and I was like not home and also like I didn't have like phone service so I would just have to get on the Mm -hmm. wi-fi and the wi-fi was always shit and so like then I couldn't facetime and then if I tried to facetime he was asleep and I just Mm -hmm. felt like so far away you Mm -hmm. know what I mean and Mm -hmm. like it just it it was shitty and so I was like I just wish I could just like fold the world in half and just like be there and not have to worry you know like about Mm -hmm. like you know uh, because it's just really hard yeah yeah it's really Mm -hmm. hard and it's it's hard to be away but then it makes it so exciting Mm -hmm. you know because you're like I'm gonna see this person but also that song is kind of about how like when I finally get home I'm Mm -hmm. in that like post-tour depression like weird kind of like need to need to go do something but there's nothing to do you know like mm-hmm. need to get up and drive somewhere because i gotta drive eight hours right and it's like no you're home just mm-hmm. like settle in yeah and so i have a really hard time doing that so it takes me like a week mm-hmm. and so then i feel like kind of distant so it's like this whole thing where you can't just snap right back into mm-hmm. you know your loving domestic relationship because mm-hmm. your head is like spinning all over the place yeah mm-hmm. so that's <laughs> in a nutshell what that song's yeah. about <laughs> um the Big Freeze, um, it's genuinely my favorite album of yours, and that's Thanks. saying saying a lot, really. Thank you. Um, and you sort of said in interviews that these songs feel re- like very real to you. Um, and from my perspective, it's probably your most honest album yet. I'm not sure if no, you'd agree with that. I do agree. Um, so I'm just wondering how, how you've got to this point in your life where you feel you can put something out that's so honest. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just was tired of not dealing with the realer shit that Mm -hmm. was causing all of the surface shit Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i was like okay there's some like really intense stuff i need to like Mm. start dealing with so i kind of like i'm i'm on the precipice of fully dealing but i'm like you know just kind of like dipping my toe in Mm. but i think that that this record i was like trying to like gather myself together Mm -hmm. to do that so maybe there's going to be a more intense one next Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. (laughs) when i'm further on this journey of Mm -hmm. self-understanding but yeah so i was just trying to like be as honest with myself as possible and try to make the most like honest closest to what is like in here trying Mm -hmm. to get it out and not mess with it yeah and just have be like exactly what i mean which Mm -hmm. is hard to do because everybody censors themselves so i was just trying to be as like automatic Mm -hmm. with it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you recorded it at your childhood home yeah did that play any influence in the honesty on there i think it played influence in the performances for sure i mean Mm -hmm. like it played into the performances because like uh yeah i was in this space that was just so utterly comfortable but complicated Mm -hmm. you know so like i could just close my eyes and feel safe but Mm -hmm. also you know there's everything is at the surface yeah so it the this record was all about the performances and so it was really important for me to be in a space like that it just so happened like it was just a perfect set of set of circumstances Mm -hmm. that led to that there were there were a lot of like disappointing circumstances that led to that where it was just like okay no studio available mm-hmm. um but like yeah it just it worked and i'm really glad we did it there because mm-hmm. the house has been sold uh-huh. um it got sold at the beginning of this tour okay when i was in the states so like early may so i like cleaned it out and it's gone mm-hmm. um 
So yeah, there's kind of like that memory on, on mm, record. Definitely. Of like the way that house sounded and how mm -hmm. it felt in that house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the closing song, Perfect, was actually based on an incident that happened at that house, mm -hmm. wasn't it? I just wondered if you could tell us about that incident. Well, it's like, it's mo it's it's a, a kind of a conglomerate. So it's like a bunch of different experiences mm -hmm. in the house, in the driveway of that house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like writing our names in the cement, like right outside the house, me playing this, like, we were trying to win the Guinness Book of World Records record. We were trying to be Guinness Book of World Record holders <laughs> yeah. for this is like, Thing called a skip it i don't know if y'all have that over here but it's like a little like ball with a counter on it and then like you put it around your ankle and then you like skip over it a bunch of times and like right. it sounds really silly mm -hmm. we have this is. thing called like bop it oh, okay. you, you hit and you like twist. we have bop it too love bop it okay twist it yeah you get it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i love bop it but um this was like just this thing that like you put on your ankle and then you like it like you fly around in circles mm -hmm. and then you just jump over it and it counts how many times you jump over it it's very silly toy um but me and my friend allison were like we're gonna win so like we were mm -hmm. just doing like like we would like hand it off to each other and i'd be like i gotta go eat dinner and then like you know mm -hmm. she'd like run home and like i'd be skipping it with the skip it um so like yeah it's just about <laughs> that factors in also yeah. and also like how i got like this weird rash um <laughs> from from playing hand games with one of my friends mm -hmm. you know hand games like mm -hmm. you do like those things and she had this thing called impetigo which is like this horrible like i think it's a bacterial infection mm -hmm. and so then i got it right. and like we were spreading it all over town um because hand games were like the mm -hmm. thing when you're like yeah. eight years old mm -hmm. so it's kind of just about how life was then but mm -hmm. like the world was still the same and we we're fighting like the same wars and like everything was falling apart and now things are falling apart even more so and like just mm -hmm. how you know the difference between then and now is not that big a difference mm. you know it's kind of about all those things mm -hmm. but there's some fun little anecdotes in there <laughs> about rashes yeah <laughs> i don't have the rash now i'm, I'm healthy <laughs> so we can shake hands after yeah absolutely fine totally yeah. Healthy. <laughs> um so was there like an element of mourning to that to that song as well, like mourning those times and maybe those friendships as well? Yeah, and just like the innocence of it all and like how like, I don't know, they're all like having kids now and like even though the world is kind of like dying and mm -hmm. it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just about that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And another th song on your album i'm going to really struggle to pronounce the name of this song i think you know which one it is dermatillomania dermatillomania okay, <laughs> yeah um so you wrote an essay on dermatillomania mm -hmm. which is a condition that causes people to pick the mm -hmm. skin um so and you said it's something in that essay about um everything you've done is like an attempt to stop or curve that issue i just wondered where that album where this album figures in that conversation um well oh that song i i kind of wanted to like document me like talking about it for real for real out loud mm -hmm. um as part of like, the healing process everything is part of the healing process so like we're all on a journey yeah, <laughs> not all of us have made it to the finish line mm -hmm. but like yeah that was like the biggest step that i had made mm -hmm. you know like was like writing that essay and then like releasing the song and you know eventually we'll get there but yeah it's all part of the process mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and the main point of that essay seemed to be or how it came across to me was that your aim was just to be like okay and accepting that you have dermatillomania yeah so like that's basically it i mean like mm -hmm. don't i think like for me i mean some people can cold turkey you know whatever and, mm -hmm. and get over whatever it is and like they just snap out of it but mm -hmm. for me it's like accepting like the path to healing mm -hmm. and if there's going to be like i think that i all, always got set back you know and, or just completely was like okay i failed fuck it you mm -hmm. know what i mean every yeah. time and like mm -hmm. that happens to people with sobriety it happens to people with you know some so many other issues in their lives and so like learning that like okay maybe for me i didn't fail and it was just like i got knocked back a little bit and now i can like move forward you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's not like i'm all the way over here mm -hmm. you know like so i think like that was me coming to terms with like how i'm 
how I can handle my shit. And mm-hmm. it was helpful because then I was like, okay, so now every time I fuck up, I didn't fuck up the big one, you mm-hmm. know, and now I'm dead and it's over, mm-hmm. you know, like it's like, I'm just like, I had a tiny little setback and that's mm-hmm. okay. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that's like, that's, that's really been important. That, that was my therapist. She was just like, you mm-hmm. didn't screw up. Like you're fine. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're going to be okay. And I was like, oh, cool. Thanks, Susan. She rocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Her so, name's Susan. <laughs> <laughs> so you are accepting now that it's just some part of your life, really? Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, but it doesn't have to be, you know, but like, I'm just accepting of myself where I'm at mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, I think that's a good note to end the interview cool. on. Cool. So yeah, um, it's been Laura. <laughs> um, so you're gonna smash the set tonight, right? I'm gonna try to smash it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, and you're gonna arrive safely in France. That is my hope. <laughs> Other things will not smash. I will only smash the set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well great. I've been Paddy from Balloon Machine and Showstream TV, and this has been a bit of a dream, really. Oh, so yeah. thanks. So I'll